Speechless. Anyway, I'm not surprised. <laughs> welcome back uh, to another episode of All About the Bass with me, Lee, and the wonderful Nathan King. Hello. Um, as you've probably come to expect by now, we talk about things that are all about the bass. And uh, this week, we have quite possibly the easiest 220 quid you'll ever spend mm. as a bass player. As yeah. There's really not a lot to dislike about something that is a the same price as what does 220 quid buy you? Not a lot. A couple of coffees, I think. It's, well, yeah, and it's expensive in a, in Starbucks. A, yeah. Oh, see, you know. Can you say Starbucks? I was going to say there are other exclusive. No, we're allowed. To, I mean, I don't think we are. Uh, are we bound by those kind of BBC style rules? I don't, well, I don't know. Are. No. You should know. I don't think we are. Okay. Um, so whatever you know, think. Comment below. What can you buy for 220 pounds? You know, and uh, and keep it clean. Or not. Uh, so the SR300 has been uh, probably the best selling bass in the UK, maybe the best selling bass in the world, I don't know, for ages. And it's been updated in 2016 to the SR300E. Yeah. Look for the E. Um, just give us the rundown of just, you know, so if people aren't familiar with the SR300, just tell us a little bit about it. Okay, well, well apparently they've made this bass for 25 years. Is that right? Oh, that's, that sounds crazy. That's what it? they say. Uh, so I don't know how much it changed in that time, uh, but this, as Lee says, is it's just absolutely tremendous value <coughs> for money. Um, it plays great, and it sounds great. Um, so yeah, what's not to like? Skinny neck, skinny. So what, jazz bass style skinny neck? Or? Yeah, yeah, really pretty, pretty skinny. I'd say yeah, even skinnier maybe than a skinnier jazz than a jazz. Oh, there or thereabouts, I guess. Marginal. Um, Modern looking bass, so you know, yep. elongated kind of horns, compact body. Yeah, oh, it's great. Yeah, I guess it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, of course. If you're after a classic, uh, I suppose classic look. if you're in like a 1950s kind of uh, you know, blues band or something like that, rock yep. and roll blues band, you, you might not want to turn up with these, but I don't no. know, pretty much. I don't know, I just think it's. I can't get over the fact that there's such a lot of instrument here for £220. You know, mahog solid mahogany body, mm -hmm. maple neck, rosewood board. Um, I guess we get into then now why is the E version, how, what have they done on the E version? So it's all to do with the electronics. Ah. So a um, couple of humbuckers, which will go through the sounds, passive humbuckers, uh, Ivan his own brand. Uh, active EQ uh, and now this quite interesting way of, of either coil tapping the pickups or having them running as full humbuckers or even doing this sort of blend of the two. Um, I think that's the idea, they call it the power tap switch don't they? Yes, absolutely. I've got a power tap on my uh, Megaflow system at home. I heard all, I heard but, all uh, about your uh, yeah, when you're on switch. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yes. So it's, hopefully this is more reliable. Yeah. Um, Big chunky bridge. They do this Accu bridge stuff. On oh all yeah, the SR Accu cast series. bridge. That's right. This is this is a sort of like a, a, a cheaper version of the of the one that's on the SR eight hundred that we did a few weeks back. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, big chunky bridge. Um, real quick and easy to restring. Look, you just slot the things in there. Yeah, you don't even have to cool. thread them, do you? you just sort of. Yeah, and they 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 kind of. Uh, they're in a, the saddles are in a channel apparently, so it stops any sort of drift one way or the other. So if you're really going nuts, <laughs> I like. Do you know what? I I can completely see what you mean. Hopefully, mm. camera can kind of zoom in on this. But on a on a sort of traditional style um, bridge, there's nothing to stop the saddles moving sort of left and right very slightly, is there? Well, that's but right. I completely go, you understand. the pick and you're going crazy for a gig. Yeah. They have a habit of um, rattling themselves to pieces. So that's kind of a, a great feature. Yeah. We've got to get into some tones, man. Okay. So let's just start with an explanation of what the, the, the knobs and buttons do and just, you just, you know, take it away, Nate. Tell us about the tones. Uh, okay. Well, controls wise, we've got volume. Yep. Straightforward. A balance. Uh, so this is the uh, sweeps between the, the back and the front pickup. And then you've got uh, three band EQ, bass, middle, and treble. And now we have this power tap switch. Uh, which configures the pickups differently uh, depending on where you have the switch. 
I'm uh, kind well, of guessing so you can go then between like a jazz bass and like a stingray kind of bass sound. So if you if you coil tapped, you'd, you'd almost have a jazz bass setup. Mm -hmm. If you had it in the middle, you'd almost have like a, a two humbucker stingray yeah, yeah. kind of setup. And I said this back one, it's not desperately clear on the Ibanez website what power tap does. But it talks about... It's mysterious. It's waiting for somebody to discover its true potential. Yeah. That's it, what I believe. It's talking about doing this. It almost point. makes it sound like you get kind of like the single coil on one pickup on the humbucker on I another. That's the but, idea. But, yeah. but it doesn't... When we were sort of tapping with an Allen key to see which got... I'm not entirely sure that's what it was doing. But it's some sort of hybrid of a single coil and a, and a humbucker yeah. setup. Uh, come on. I keep talking. Just people don't want to hear me talk. What do you want to hear? The bass. Mainly. Well, it's all about the bass, it's isn't about it? The bass. Okay. Well, <coughs> let's try. Uh, we stay in the middle position for. for start okay, middle and, position. And we'll just show them how the humbuckers would sound, and you just fiddle. Okay. So we'll try the back pickup. See what that's like. <laughs> Honky, as you would expect. Uh, front pickup. Yeah, okay. Uh, and they're both together. That's when you get your real sort of power. That's a that's a pretty full full it's a big sound. sound. Yeah, it is a big sound. Yeah. We, we were doing a jazz bass video sorry a p bass video earlier yeah. and all the settings and everything are the same and we just plug this in it's like i say twice as loud it's probably a bit but yes. substantially louder well it is yeah i think that's because you've got your active uh sort of bit of the circuit in there you know that always gives you a bit more um a bit more level and uh, of course it gives you it makes it all much brighter you know yeah. that's the whole point about the active thing you know it gives you more tonal variation yeah so you know you can you can uh, if, you're, if you're in slap bass for instance you know this would be a lot better than a p bass yeah uh, I, I, some people might disagree with me but uh, no, I, I personally I tonally think so. i think so you know if we used to get in the single coil mode for instance yeah. Uh, in the middle. The hybrid, let's do the hybrid. Yeah, do the hybrid. The best thing that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, that is, because it's kind of like, the single coil mode was, I preferred the single coil sound to the humbucker <laughs> sound for the slap bass, because right. it, it had the attack. Mm. But, the hybrid mode has the attack, but also a little bit of the guts at the bottom end as well. We've discovered it? what it's for. Yeah, I like it. Play you some more slap, slap bass heroes on that, on that power tap set. So it's hard to do something that's not an E. <laughs> 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 it's, it's impossible. Oh, there's it again. Oh, that's come on. That's right, you've got to have an E. So, and what were you on there? The middle, oh, you were just on the middle setting, weren't you? So what if we go, I don't know, let's, just, let's do that again. What would, That would be the all the way this way, I think, wouldn't yeah. it? So like a fatter tone. Do you, do you think you lose too much snap for uh, sort of slap? Well, for slap, I think you do, yeah, but I don't think it's intended for that, is it? Just try it. Yeah. Do you know what, yeah, but I kind of like it. I like the woodiness of it, because it's different. Okay. Uh, Oh, it's got its place. And all the way around, so this would be the uh, the bridge pickup. It's going to be pretty harsh, I'm yeah. guessing. Oh yeah, a bit weedy that. That's yeah, all right though. Maybe that is more of that traditional jazz bass kind of tone. Mm. What have you done with the and the EQs? You just uh, every, flat. everything's flat um, so far. Let's show people what happens if you do some sort of smiley face EQ or whatever you want to do, you know. Just yeah, smiley face. Okay, so we'll lift the bottom and the top and scoot a bit of mid out. And, well, let's do it radically. Let's go north. Oof. Apparently this thing's got like 16 dB either way. Wow. So this might be... A lot. Very scary. I don't know. Uh, oh my word. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tone that down a little bit. Yes. I've got quite some nuts. I said organ failure. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
kind of nice. Uh, okay, and if we do it the opposite way, let me get more of a. Oh yeah. Etc. Play some of that like real classic old, you know, Fender jazz bass kind of. Um, because that did instantly remind me of that Jacko kind of sound. Maybe. Uh, yes, it is. I'm a bit, yeah, I wouldn't roll out quite so much bottom end to, mm. to get that. But yeah, that, as you, that's the whole point about putting the mid in, is you get the real honky. Mm -hmm. See, mid out. I've been into clothes shops where they sell ties for more money than you know you can buy this base for. It's just ridiculous. Where are you shop? Well, you know, expensive clothes shops, expensive tie shops, obviously. Not that you can tell from the scruffy urchin that I usually come to work dressed as. Um, oh man, this is, is I, I, the SR series is is such a fabulous, fabulous range, and and, it, and you can go a tiny bit cheaper in SR. You can go. No more than cheaper. I think they do one that's kind of designed to go in like a base starter pack, that sort of thing, which mm. hasn't got any of the active stuff in it, but it sort of looks much the same. And you can certainly go up in the SR range. I mean, it, the, the, you know, this is very much the sort of the... I picked this one out because I think it's the first uh, SR base that's got a little bit of kind of pro spec on it, even though it's just ludicrously not pro priced. Mm. Um, I have no idea how this will stand up on the road. You know, it might well be that... that you know, it's not got the sort of reinforced neck, maybe, to, to well, withstand it's, those It's rigors. a five-piece, five yeah. you know, ply. Uh, looks pretty good to me. I agree. I mean, it, it's just crazy, isn't it? There's got to be something. There's got to be some uh, hidden downside to, to touring with a bass that only costs you £200, but uh, it's not it is, terribly it, it, apparent at the moment. It makes you age much faster than you really would. Uh, I have one downside. Uh, there is not uh, a huge choice of colours on this guitar. Okay. It's, it's very much uh, inspired by um, those early Charlie Chaplin movies. So basically you can have black or white. That's, that's your two choices. Uh, they are pearly kind of finishes, so it's like a metallic white or a metallic black. Mm. Um, but yes, there's... Uh, so I guess then as you go up through the range, you're going to get more colour options, right? You get more colour options and you also get some of those very pretty kind of natural wood finishes. Okay, um, well there you go then. I liked that scoop mid-range slap thing you had going on, but I think that's what? probably because it just takes me back to, you know, <coughs> buying that first Level 42 album that I, you know, with Running in the Family and all those kind of killer tunes on it. And okay. it was just that kind of, then I just had that, it was when it was all new and fresh. Well, that well, was this it, bass certainly new and fresh does, for me anyway. This certainly does a slap thing very well. Like the, I like the, it in power tap mode, are, I think. Do you? Yeah, did you not? Uh, power tap was my favourite tone you had, okay. with a little bit of mid-range scooped out and a little bit of extra bottom and top. All oh, right. Uh, yeah, let's have a bit of that then. In E. In E. Ah! Yeah. No, not in E. Something else. Uh, a flat. It's a great sounding instrument. I'm so that's this is this has been one of my favourite all about the bass episodes so far. Um, <laughs> we're just running into a little Fender, well I say little, a sort of a medium sized Fender Rumble 200 bass amp uh, with everything flat. We aren't using any of the kind of uh, optional extra buttons that it's no, got. No, 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 absolutely. It's just it, it is flat. Flat and as a pancake. I think the DI is just DI out anyway. There's no yeah. nothing. No, this is uh, just all about the. 
officially blown away. What can I say? Stupidly great value bass guitar from Ibanez. End of. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Oh, I've, I haven't got anything to fault with it. I think it's great. It's really versatile. I'd happily go out and gig with this. Yeah, no worries. I might want a different colour. Yes. But then you spend a bit more money, you have a nice colour. Well, do it yourself. You know, it's like, it's punk it up. Relic it. Stickers. Yeah. Draw a smiley face on it, whatever you want to do. A bit of uh, some carpet on it, something. Carpet? You could do that, couldn't you? I yeah. can see a new line of Nathan Kin signature Ivanez 200 in shag pile finish. Cork. The cork <laughs> tile. We digress. Anyway, we've got another 73 videos to shoot today before Nathan has to go home. Anyway, see you later. Uh -huh.